Hello. Today we want to take a few minutes to talk to you about the IT governance lifecycle and how requirements analysis, technical review, cyber, and the CAMs all work together to ensure that JSP gathers all the requirements from a customer during their request, processes that request, and moves it up to a pre-investment decision. The approach we decided to take was to start with the end of the story first, where we paint the 30,000 foot picture of the IT governance life cycle and then dig a little deeper. The IT governance life cycle starts with the idea that a customer might have. The customer might be our parent organization, DISO or DOD, CIO. It might be clients like the Joint Chiefs or DHRI or maybe in and out of our internal work centers. That information is passed over to one of four collection points portfolio management for requests that are two to five years out, capital investment for requests that are zero to two years, customer engagement for zero day requests, and transport for our network or infrastructure to infrastructure type of requests. All those move into requirements analysis and solution design, also known as technical review. Finally, they are fed into the IT governance process, starting with the pre-investment decision point. Today, we're going to start with just one scenario where a client makes a request through the CAM business channel up to requirements analysis, design, and ultimately to a pre-investment decision. The way a requirement is documented is in a business requirements document, also known as a BRD. A BRD has a lot of great information that JSP needs to gather in order to ensure that it is able to manage the requirement. But in section 1.7 of the BRD is the core narrative, what the client has said that they need in order to ensure that they're able to execute on their mission. That typically comes in as a wall of words. What requirements analysis would do after receiving the BRD from the CAM is to filter away all of the extraneous words and get to the point. And like in this situation, an instructor and students located in CG2 would like to broadcast information or present information from their laptops and iPhones via MiFi or Wi-Fi up to screens and to each other's uh, screen all inside of the classroom. So the process that we're talking about using is the client submits a request through the CAM. That information is passed over to RA. RA takes that request, opens it up, and then determines what additional questions need to be answered in order to ensure that the center chiefs at the pre-investment decision have the information that they need in order to make a well-informed decision. The RAs create a data call. That data call is passed back to the CAMs. The CAM schedule an interview with the client and their SMEs. The client and their SMEs are interviewed by the CAMs, RA, and cybersecurity to complete the data call and the PIA if necessary and a couple of additional questions that might come up during the session. That information is packaged together, passed over to the TRG and cyber's uh, architectural arm to develop viable courses of actions, including the client's original course of action, which in this situation was the air tame device. Once that's done, the courses of action, the analysis of alternatives, the data call, and the BRD, all of that is packaged up and presented to the uh, Information Technology Governance Board uh, for a pre-investment review for JSP to determine whether or not this is something that they want to do. So how do you build this data call? Well, what requirements analysis will do is to take the narrative and break it apart into actors, locations, props, and proposed solutions. So in this situation, the actors are instructors and students and guests. The location is a CG2 classroom. The props are the screens, the laptops, mobile phones, and monitors. What RA then does, and once they complete this interview, is to start to build out the narrative. An instructor under R2 can present a single screen from his or her laptop to multiple student screens. Under R6, a student can present a single screen from their mobile phone to the large screen via MiFi. Or under R8, a guest might be able to present a screen from their mobile phone to the instructor's mobile phone screen, or whatever those scenarios are. Then. 
working with the client, trying to prioritize these requirements. What do you really need to have done? And what are interesting things, but they're not imperative? In addition to that, the cybersecurity folks who participate in the interview are asking questions about data that might be involved in this solution set, that might be involved in this request. Now, in this scenario, the client is only asking for a small device that allows them to broadcast information to a screen, but it could just as easily have been a requirement for a new task management system for the DoD Space Corps. Well, in that situation, what you're doing is to ask for specific responses to questions. What type of data will you be storing in the system? Are you doing a C.2.3 planning and budgeting or a D.23 federal financial assistance or income security or knowledge management or economic development? What type of data are you bringing in? And then what is the level of confidentiality of that data? What is the level of integrity that we must maintain with that data? And what is the level of availability we need to maintain with this data in this system? That combination of information and rating, risk ratings, help the cybersecurity folks to develop a system categorization. That system categorization is imperative in order to select the type of controls that cybersecurity would need to place on the system later on. The information is available during the initial interview for the most part, as is information on what type of interfaces might be involved in the uh, management of this overall system. You know, is data going to be uh, brought in from DFAS? Is data going to be bring out brought in from MedCom? Is data going to be brought in from DMDC or from Google or from Homeland Security? What are those interfaces that need to be brought in? Who has access to those interfaces? Who, you know, are we going to be provisioning out access to our SIPRNet on this back end? Similarly, we ask questions about PIA and PHI and PII and PHI. You know, what type of privacy information is going to be involved in this system? And you go through this so that you can determine whether or not you need to publish a SORN or whether or not you need to add additional controls in to help you better manage the data that's going to be in the system. Finally, that information is put together and sent forward to the technical review group during which viable courses of actions and an analysis of alternative are built by the uh, technology review group, which has some of our highest level SMEs in the room. You know, in, individuals from cybersecurity, from compute, from database, from storage. All of that information is put together and then passed forward to the pre-investment decision gate with the IT Governance Board, where the center chiefs will look at a summarization of this and determine whether or not this is a project that JSP could or should support. Again, we've gone from the idea of a client through customer engagement, through analysis, just up to the pre-investment decision gate. That's where we are at the moment, but in reality, JSP has a much larger life cycle. Cybersecurity alone has a 180-day clock that they manage in reviewing the accreditation of a system, and that includes step one, the categorization of a system. Under step two, we see the selection of controls. Remember all that those questions we were asking about the data types in step one. You know, is it financial data or budgeting data or you know knowledge management data? That helps determine what type of controls need to be put in place. Under step three, the implementation of those controls, which occurs around the time we start doing development and tests, the preparation of the approach for the assessment, the risk determination. By step five, we're looking to authorize the system around the time of deployment. You know, we get the system deployed and then we do the scans. We remediate those items that might be on the POAM. And then ultimately under step six, we put it into continuous monitoring where we are perpetually looking to ensure the controls are maintained. We have a project management lifecycle that we also need to map into this presentation so that you can see how this orchestration of activities is important. So how do we go live with this sort of implementation? Well, 
some of the stuff is already done. We already know that customers have the ability to generate ideas and know how to document those ideas. Under collection, we have a little more work to do on the customer engagement side, working with customer engagement to show how customer engagement, RA and cyber, can work together to do this harvesting of information. Under requirements analysis, we have a pretty good idea of how to transform a narrative and the response from a data call into requirement steps. We also have a generally good idea of how we're uh, going to bring together the subject matter experts to develop the courses of action and the analysis of alternatives. We have a pretty good idea of how the pre-investment portion, portion of this process would work. We still have some work to do on pre-acquire, pre-deploy, and of course operations, the governance process for that, which is the ECRB and CAB, working, are working pretty well. There's not really any modification that needs to be done overall. This is the life cycle. This is the way that we can hit the mark on making better selection decisions, better investment decisions, better acquisition decisions, and better deployment decisions by ensuring that everything that is necessary to move from one gate to another is in place before you traverse that gate. So before you do an acquisition, bring a project in and say, okay, show me the stuff that you have to ensure that you're ready to go. And before we deploy, bring me the stuff that you have into the ITG and let's ensure that once you complete uh, deployment successfully, that you're immediately ready to go ahead and execute transition. That's it. I thank you.